So, good morning, everybody. I would also like to thank Klaus for having me back here in Bern again. It's always a great pleasure to be here. And I really appreciate that I'm still kind part of the Bern group. Now, uh, I think, as Moritz has introduced, hip instability is uh, quite an important factor, which we still don't really understand. And while it's clear that dysplasia is an obvious cause of instability and has to be treated with a periastabular osteotomy, the problem of the borderline hips is less clear. Um, I'll talk later about the definition, but briefly, we have a group of hips that are between stable or dysplastic and normal that form a transition group from unstable to stable hips. But if you look at those borderline hips, some may be stable, as some are maybe unstable. And the problem is we don't know which is what. In general, the results of hip arthroscopy of borderline hips is inferior to the general impingement hips. Hip arthroscopy in dysplastic hips has a high failure rate. And in a recent work, it was also shown that a previous hip arthroscopy in a dysplastic or unstable hip um, has a negative impact on the result of the PAO. But now, what's exactly borderline hip? It's a radiographic classification that was, came up, uh, was put up by Wieberg in the, in the early, always, almost 80 years ago. And he classified his hip as normal when the coverage was above 25 degrees. He talked about dysplastic hip when they were less than 20 degrees and borderline those in between. One problem is that I always see is how do we have to measure the center edge angle? And it's clear from his publication that we have to measure the lateral, most lateral point of the source seal that is seen on the AP uh, radiograph. So that would be on this left hip, on this right hip, would that be that point? On the left hip, that would be that point. It's not the most lateral point uh, of the acetabular bone you can see. And this publication of Omeroglu, he shows that when you use this incorrect angle where you measure the most lateral a point of the bone in, instead of the most lateral point of the source seal, you get a difference in uh, young adults of about four degrees, which may be just be the difference between a borderline or a dysplastic hip. But what is the problem with the borderline hips? We don't really know how to treat them because we don't know what's going on if they're stable or not. We have to understand that the borderline is a radiographic definition and gives absolutely no information about the stability. But the treatment we are supposed to do depends on the stability of the hip. So the principal questions we have to ask is, is the hip stable or is it not? We know that the stability of the hip depends on the bony geometry. The load transfer to the labrum is normal hip is neglectable in the dysplastic hip a little bit higher. If you have load across the hip, the equilibrium is in the normal hip is in the center of the acetabulum, and in the dysplastic hip, near the acetabular rim, and we have an opening in posteriorly as soon as the hip is loaded, so we have a gap posteriorly, which can be helpful later on in identifying stable hips. If you look at radiographs, there are two signs, in my opinion, that are clear that show that the hip is unstable. One is the radiographic visibility of the femoral head migration when the head moves out laterally or the Gadolinium posterior inferiorly. So this is an example. We see that the distance between the head and the teardrop or the fossa on the left side is higher than on the right. So this hip is clearly unstable. It moves out and it's also shown by the break of the sentence line. So every time you have a break of sentence lines, this hip is unstable migrating. But you also can see uh, maybe more subtle in subtle hips that you have gadolinium uh, between the acetabulum and the femoral head, posterior inferiorly, uh, marked by those uh, green arrows there. So when you see that, that is unstable. We have just put our data together from the Lucerne data, and it's clear that the unstable or dysplastic hips all show this sign um, there, but it hasn't been published yet. There are other radiographic parameters associated with hip instability, which are less clear. 
a high at double index, low at the center edge angle, high femoral anti torsion, and a high neck shaft angle. And we looked at some of our patients um, which had a, an LCE angle less than 25 degrees, which were considered unstable if migration of the femoral head was observed. So we had an equally big groups, 24 hips considered unstable that underwent PAO, and 22 that had, were unstable had impingement surgery. And we looked at the, those different parameters. And of course, the difference between the LCE angle at stubborn index and neck shaft angles was in all groups highly significant. The problem is that we have an overlap between those values, for instance, lateral center edge angle between 18 and 22 degrees in this group, they were either unstable or stable. And also for the adstable index, we have a range where we don't know where to classify those patients or those hips. Maybe of help could be the orientation of the growth plate. We know that the epiphyseal growth plate grows perpendicularly to the joint reaction forces, has been published by Powell's, by Hamkins. There are um, several people have worked on that. And it changes, the orientation of the growth plate changes until about the age of 10 during growth after the physis closes and then it won't change its direction anymore. So we did the study with the hypothesis that the orientation of the growth plate is perpendicular to joint reacting forces. In dysplastic and unstable hips, the growth plate may change its orientation from the normal. And if this is true, this may be a dynamic indicator for the stability or instability of the hip. And we came up with this uh, FEAR index, the femoral epiphyseal at stable roof index, where we measure the angle between like the adstable index from the medial to the lateral, most lateral point of the adstable roof. And we took the central third of the growth plate of the femur um, and connected, made an angle out of this. So we have here, and I have to check if this, how this works. It's a bit, <laughs> well, I think I don't like this. So. I'll help myself here, but it won't show up on the video, I guess. So if the, if the angle, so this forms an angle which can be open medial or open laterally. If it's open medially, that means that the joint tracking forces across the physis are medially directed with reference to the acetabu roof. So we call this negative and positive if it's open laterally. So the forces were just await laterally. And we did an ICC, which showed as quite highly significant or um, um, inter-observer and intra-observer agreement. So we made three groups. We had a normal group with an LC angle above 25 and below 35, normal at stable index. We had this unstable group um, of 20 patients. We had a stable group where the LC was less than 25 degrees, but no signs of instability. And we did some statistics. We measured all those angles, did some statistics on that, especially on the fear index. And we came out with that result, which summarizes. If in the control group, on average, we have the mean uh, fear index of 12 degrees. In the stable control group, we have a mean of minus four degrees. And the unstable group, the positive groups, had a mean of eight degrees. And we did some additional calculations, statistic and prediction model with our statisticians, and we found out if we put the fear index of plus two degrees, we can predict uh, in 92% correctly the stability of the hip. Uh, with the rock curve, which, has, which is quite high um, predictive value, it shows that the fear index is quite a good predictor for telling us how stable, stable the hip is. So unstable hips are those, those that have a positive index, the negative hip that have a negative index, and the threshold is two degrees. I personally lose in daily practice zero degrees, but this may be a good threshold to work with. So the fear index is a reliable tool to assess hip stability. Uh, it has a high 
uh, prediction value for st predicting stability, but there's still some room for uncertainty. And if it's sometimes nothing is 100% sure in medicine, so if it's unclear, if you're still not sure if it's unstable, then rather consider that the hip may be unstable. Because um, the major factors are mechanical stress and dynamic instability. And if these are not improved during surgery, the outcome will not be that good. But we also have to keep in mind, we shouldn't only treat on short term. And I think this work of Thomas is quite interesting. He showed that each degree reduction in the LCE below 28 degrees is associated with a 13 degrees, 13% 13 increase of risk of radiographic OA in, within 20 years. So it's not only on short term, we have to decide if the hip is unstable or stable. Even a small hip which is stable can have high shear stresses across the joint because the joint bearing area is very small. So maybe we sh if we are not sure, it probably more, makes more sense not to treat the symptoms, but to treat the mechanics and do some redirection of the acetabulum. Thank you very much.